Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing a manual therapy technique that's targeted at the hip joint, and that is lateral hip distractions. In the follow-up video to this, we're going to be talking about different exercises that you can do that help to reinforce gains that you might have made during this manual therapy technique. Now, there's multiple types of hip distractions, and someone might have a different opinion than this, but I find clinically that most patients tend to respond the best to lateral hip distractions compared to the caudal ones, especially the long axis hip distraction. And I think with the lateral hip distraction compared to the long axis one, it's a little bit easier to bias internal or external rotation. Um, it's a little bit easier to control that joint. And also if the patient has knee issues or ankle issues, you can bypass those a little bit more easily. So the purpose of a lateral hip distraction, like any hip distraction, is to improve range of motion at the hip when they have a capsular restriction. So when you do a lateral hip distraction, you're not doing anything for muscular restrictions. So you do have to differentiate between muscular and capsular. Um, one way you can do this is to directly test uh, the motion of the capsule. You can do that, we'll cover that in other videos. But it's also useful to know that when you have a muscular restriction, uh, the point where you feel the first resistance in that passive range of motion and where you can't move anymore is a lot wider of a margin than you have with a capsular restriction. So if, I'm, if I have a muscular restriction, like let's say piriformis or glutes or something like that, as you get that first tissue resistance, you're going to be able to push a lot farther than you can if it's a capsular restriction or something intrinsic within the hip joint like arthritis or impingement, something like that, or just sim simply capsular tightness. That window where you're able to push through from the first resistance is gonna be more abrupt, okay? So that's one way you can kind of feel uh, the difference with end feel, okay? Um, and in general, hip distractions, particularly lateral, are especially useful when somebody has limited external rotation or internal rotation range of motion. So how do you know if somebody has limited hip range of motion or that they've got some issue at the hip? Well, you test it. And while these over here on the right side, these are not the only tests that can be used, I find that these are especially useful for determining whether or not somebody has limited range of motion, first of all, but also if they've got some pathology at the hip that might benefit from manual therapy, like hip arthritis, impingement, or just simply capsular stiffness. So sometimes what I'll start with is taking the hip through passive range of motion assessing end feel and overall range. Um, not shown here would be the hip scour. So I'm gonna move directly into the fadier test, flexion, adduction, internal rotation. And then I'll assess external rotation, range of motion. Always assessing if it feels like more of a muscular restriction or a capsular restriction, assessing for pain response. And then I'll assess internal rotation, range of motion, okay? Um, not shown here also would be direct assessments on the hip capsule. We're going to be covering those in other videos, but all in all, you're looking for reproduction of pain and you're looking for side to side differences. Um, what if both sides are very limited? How would you know that? Well, there's no side to side difference, but both sides are limited. You default to your range of motion values over here. So now at this point, let's suppose you've determined the patient does have a capsular restriction at the hip and that they would benefit from manual therapy and you're gonna try lateral hip distractions. So what you as the PT are gonna do is wrap a rigid strap both around the patient's proximal thigh as close to their groin as possible and around your own buttocks. So I've got this blue strap right here. It is rigid, elastic bands will not work for this. Okay? It's around my butt here and depending on your own comfort or how you prefer to do this, you can place the strap a little bit lower around um, the top of the back of both of your thighs, um, but it's really best if you can do it around your buttocks. Okay, it gives you a little bit better leverage. And then here I have the strap around the inside of the patient's proximal thigh. I'm not gonna place the strap there. Um, I'm going to let the patient position that once we have this towel in position, just for the sake of of modesty, okay? And then using their hand, the PT will brace laterally against the patient's lateral knee or distal thigh. And that's what my left hand here is doing. It's providing a counter force. So that way, when I do the mobilization in just a minute, you'll see it's not the whole leg moving, 
I'm really getting isolated movement just at the hip joint so that I can target that capsule more specifically. And then you can't see it here, but my right hand is holding onto the patient's ankle or their foot, depending on what's most comfortable. Um, and that's gonna allow me to control the degree of internal or external rotation while I do this distraction. But I'm generally gonna start doing it in a neutral position of the hip, okay? Neutral from the transverse plane perspective. And then the PT will use their buttocks to laterally distract the patient's hip capsule according to Maitland mobilization guidelines. So let's see what this generally looks like. So left hand is providing a counter force and then all I'm doing is I'm just kind of shifting my weight back a little bit. I'm driving my buttocks backward. This is making it to where I hardly have to do any work, okay? And you should be able to see there that the knee is really not moving because my left hand is providing the counter force and that that movement is occurring specifically around that right hip in this example, okay? Now in terms of dosing this, we're doing Maitland mobilization. So grades one and two are for decreasing pain and then grades three and four are improving range of motion. So grades one and two are when you have a painful restriction and grades three and four are when you have a pain-free capsular restriction. And in general, what I'm going to do is one to two sets of pure lateral distraction. And each set is going to be between 30 and 60 seconds of this, oscillating in and out. And then what I'm going to do after that, and we'll look at examples of this in a minute, is I'm going to do one to two sets of that lateral distraction plus adding a little external rotation or adding a little bit of internal rotation depending on what's restricted. So some patients will have more of a, a, a deficiency in external rotation, some will be internal. How do you know which one it is? Well, you tested that before you ever did this mobilization. So then you do the mobilization and then you do the retest. And the retest is simply that range of motion testing. Or if it was the fadier test, let's say, or a hip scour that was a positive test for pain, you do that as the retest and you determine whether or not it had any effect, okay? So that was the neutral lateral hip distraction. Let's see how we can bias internal and external rotation while we're doing the same thing. So this right here, this is a lateral hip distraction, but it's with an external rotation bias. All that means is I'm pre-positioning the hip in external rotation and then holding it there while I do the distraction mobilization. Okay. I can also do this where instead of holding it in external rotation, I'm doing the distraction at the same time that I'm adding the external rotation. So now I'm getting a little more passive external rotation as I'm distracting. Okay. I can play these same games with internal rotation. So here's an internal rotation bias. I'm holding it in internal rotation, and then I'm applying the distraction, okay? In the same way, I can also do the distraction, but add internal rotation while I'm doing the distraction. This is one of my favorites to do. And what you'll find, I think, clinically is that, generally speaking, more people are limited in internal rotation than they are external rotation. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna find somebody with an external rotation restriction. It just means that restrictions in internal rotation tend to be a lot more common. Now, a couple of points here before we close the video. Um, if you have an athlete, particularly one that needs to squat deep and they have pain with deep squatting or they just have a restriction and can't squat any deeper, one of the most common limitations is actually hip internal rotation. And so we'll be covering that a little bit more in one of the future videos, the one where we talk about internal rotation specifically. But athletes that have difficulty squatting to depth, that's a good place to check. Um, even if it's painless, it may actually be restricted. And if you look at these range of motion values, these are just normative values, like 30 degrees for internal rotation. It means to be functional, you should have 30 degrees. But to squat really deep like you might need in an Olympic snatch or a clean and jerk when you're catching the bar um, off the floor, you may need a lot more than 30 degrees for those kind of lifts to get to that depth. So this is just a normal value. You may have this value but still have difficulty because you need even more internal rotation.
Um, and then the final point here is what I typically do in the clinic. Let's say they do have an internal rotation restriction. Well, like I said, I'll normally start with just this neutral hip distraction. This is almost like the warm up before we start adding other combined movements with this. Um, and then usually what I'll do, I'll do one to two sets of that. And then I'll go into this one. This is one of my favorites. I prefer adding the range of motion passively while I'm doing the distraction instead of just biasing that position of internal rotation and then doing the distraction like we saw on the previous slide, okay? But you got a lot of things that you can do with this, a lot of tools in your box here. And again, always use the test, treat, retest model. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Join us in the next videos where we talk specifically about getting more external and internal rotation and adding exercises to go with those. Thank you.